Alrighty. Hey guys. Uh, here I have the improvisation map open in Hammer. And as you can see here, I have the pillar uh, wobbles back and forth, connected to a hinge, and resting on both a funk detail and a funk breakable. Up in the ceiling here, I have two fizz boxes. Both of these fall down in the map, hit this faith plate, pass through a trigger, and then hit the pillar. In that sequence, the funk breakable snaps and allows the pillar to wobble back and forth. And as if you've seen the improvisation map video walkthrough I made, a laser will then cut this invisible brush, breaking the hinge and sending the tower crashing right into the, a glass window. I'm going to cover how to make the tower, the hinge, its base, and the fizz boxes and catapult. For you who are advanced with Hammer, this is probably the point where you will go, Oh, I already know what to do, and stop watching the video. That's fine. For those who don't know what's going on, I'm going to just go step by step and see what happens. Alright? So, let me uh, select no draw texture first. And let's create a block. About 512 all the way around. I'll hollow it out. I wouldn't recommend hollowing out for official levels, but here I'm not going to worry. Okay. Put a player start in this map and line it up. Now I'm going to open up dev textures and paint the walls. Okay, so while I'm in dev textures, I'm going to grab uh, reflectivity 30. That's just so it'll stand out from the floor. Now let's start on the pillar here. Lift it up to about here. It's probably a good height. Now I'm going to cut this into two into three pieces actually, saving both pieces from each cut. Now, this top piece, I'm going to double its size. Uh, well, actually quadruple, but yeah. That way, this pillar will be top heavy when it rocks back and forth. Let's tie this to a funk fizz box and call it pillar. Oh, and a tie. I'm using a lot of a keyboard shortcuts here, so tying uh, to entities I'm using control T. See? And I'm going to be using a lot of keyboard shortcuts throughout the entire video. I may not specify what I'm doing, but if you look on the sides here, you'll probably be able to see me switching between them. So if you're unsure, just pause the video, rewind, and take a peek. Now, getting back into this tower, at the base here, I'm going to split this thing in half. Now, from here, I'm going to lower the grid size. Open up the vertex tool, and let's bump this up just a little, and lower the grid size a little more. I'm actually going to dial it back one. There we go. Alright, so this piece here is going to be the base, so funk detail, nothing special. This piece, however, is going to be the piece that breaks to allow the tower to move back and forth. So let's tie it to funk breakable. Give it a name. So I'll stop break. That's as good as the name as any. Now, I'm going to open up and grab hinge, or fizz hinge, from the entity list. Navigate inside here, and line this up with the origin of the pillar, the very middle of it, so it's in dead center. But down here, I'm going to put the origin of the hinge right where the pillar meets the base. That 
Let's open it up its properties and name it. And have it connect to the pillar. Just the pillar. Next up, I'm going to left click on this circle here for the origin and drag it out to the left. Dragging out to the right will produce the same result in the end, but I just favor the left right now. And that is a wobbling tower for the most part. So I'm going to make a save here. Tower tutorial, not ZA. Okay. Now we have hammer crashes on us. I won't have lost all this progress. Well, not. Oh well. Okay. So let's select the solid up here. I'm going to copy it over. And resize it. Oh, come on. And let's pull it back. This is going to be the falling piece that falls onto a faith plate and launches straight into the pillar. Another fizz box. But this one, I'm going to go to the flags tab and make it start asleep. That way we can trigger it when we want instead of it having start immediately as the map spawns. Let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it Falling Piece again. It's already been used. Alright, so let's browse for another texture. Let's go for trigger. I'm going to draw the trigger where I want it here. Put it on the ground. And let's tie it to a trigger catapult. Go to the flags tab and check pushables and physics objects. Let's actually reopen this again. And I'm going to make it push a little harder. As well as point it in the right direction. I want it to go off the ground, so I'm going to give it a negative Z value. Let's give it negative 40. And I want the point up here. So it'd be 90. Just so you can see what I mean, I'm gonna remove the negative four here. And see how it's going up now? And it now lines up perfectly here. So search I want to go, and I want to go lift it off the ground so it glances off. Okay. So that gives us a falling piece that starts to sleep, a trigger catapult which launches, it, launches to here. What's that? We have this funk fizz box, the funk detail base, and a breakable. And inside all that is a hinge. That's all fine and dandy, but once this falls and hits here, there's nothing to break this. So what I'm going to do is create a button that'll do this all for us. You could have um, the catapult here use its uncatapulted output to break the breakable, but I'm not going to do that. In improvisation, I actually have it um, pass through a, a second trigger that triggers the break and some sound effects. So, let's give it an on pressed tell the falling piece to wake up and tell the funk breakable to break. Now this will produce that waking up on spawn uh, when you press the button. This coming over here and at the same time breaking here. So once this wakes, that breaks, this hits, and this starts wobbling back and forth. There's going to be a slight delay where this pillar is actually going to move a little bit and may start tipping over on its own. That's alright. This is just going to help it along. Now, after it rocks back and forth for a while, I'm going to have it the hinge itself break. So it'll 
go to the wall. And I don't want the to break too soon, so let's give it a delay of eight seconds. Arbitrary number. Eight seconds. It may fall back, it may fall forward. I don't know. If it falls back, it's gonna hit the catapult and probably bounce forward and may smack the player around a bit. Who knows? Let's do a quick save there and double check IO. Make sure all properties are set. Alright, let's compile this. And portal. There we go. And there you see it. Rolling back and forth. And it's going to snap any moment now. There it goes. And that's that. A falling tower. A wobbling and then falling, but... That is it. I'm going to hop back into improvisation right now, just to uh, show you these two phys explosions I have. I use them for I call them tower pushers, because when the player goes through here, I don't know when they're going to break this little piece in here. So, if the pillar is falling backwards, I don't want it to fall, hit this, and then fly across the map. So I have these two here to give it a little boost, a little push forward to ensure that it falls and hits this. It's just a little something you can do. And with that, I believe that'll conclude my tutorial. I have shown you entities involved in the actual map, and how to make a simplified version without all the fancy bills and whistles I had in the actual map. I hope this was helpful and that you get something out of it. If you have any questions, leave a comment, send me a message, I'll respond when I have time. And that'll do it. Good night!